Welcome back to the lab folks. So I yesterday I actually uh, wanted to do a mailbag video and I did a mailbag video but I did the whole thing uh, with the microphone not turned on. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at what I unveiled yesterday. Um, so let's get started here. Uh, this here is just one of those little low voltage tube amplifiers and I've I had a look at these before and was tempted to buy them, but never quite got around to it. But somebody suggested in one of my um, videos about the amplifier we're working on that I should uh, pick one of these kits up and try it as a front end to that amplifier. So that's what I'll do. Now, uh, I know that some of my kit building videos haven't been people's favorite. So let me know down in the comments whether you want me to do a video about the build of this thing. Here's another item. Now, if you go back a couple of, um, of my other mailbag videos, you'll find that uh, I've been using these battery converters. So what I want to kind of do is I want to, I want to standardize on, you know, just these lithium batteries and I want to standardize on just double A and triple A. So I've got the converters for the double A's up to the C's and the D's and uh, the triple A's I don't have converters for them up to the other ones, but I got these converters here, which um, this is not lithium, which uh, just allows you to make your AAA into a AA. And the reason I got these is that sometimes I run out of these, but I may have some of these around, and then I have something that uh, a AA will fit into, and it may take me a few days to get some in. So I've got these around just as a handy little replacement to get me up and going pretty quickly. So that's what I got those for. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Go, go back over there. And I also picked up some capacitors. Now all the stuff came off of AliExpress of course. That's where I've been doing all my shopping with regards to electronics these days. So these are just some uh, 10 UF 25 volt capacitors. I just ran out of them and got some more. Then there's these items here. These items are just DNC caps. And the reason I got these was for checking noise floors on my scopes. So basically uh, what I do is I'll just attach this to the scope over the, the channel that I'm tech checking and that'll kind of put a ground over it. So we'll see what the noise floor of the scope itself is without picking up anything else. That's only going to make a tiny difference. But you know, it's things on AliExpress are pretty reasonably priced. So I thought I'd get a couple of those just for that purpose. I might even get some more of them and then use them on equipment that's been up, put up on the shelf for a while so that dust doesn't get in. We'll see. Here are some voltage regulators. These are just uh, 15 volt regulators. I've got the, both the negative and the positive ones. I bought a bunch of these, uh, oh, maybe 20, 25 years ago, about the same amount, I guess, about 10 of them. And I finally ran out of them. So I bought an, another 10 of each. I might never run out of them again, but we'll, you never know. So anyway, these are just uh, 78.15 and 79.15s. I've got this here too. This is a case. I got this case for a specific reason, which you'll see in a minute. This case is a fairly large one. And it's got a, you know, it's got a pocket in it here for leads and stuff like that, or for uh, documentation. And it's got an area here. So I, I don't really have much to say about it other than that. Pretty nice case though. It's a semi-rigid, cloth covered, and the inside is, is fairly nice. It's, it's very, very fine cloth on the inside. And good, tough, like Cordura nylon on the outside. Now let me show you what I got it for. This here is a Hantec HT8100 100 megahertz high voltage isolating probe. Now I got this, it's a differential probe. So I got this, not for the high voltage part, because I don't do a lot of work in high voltage, but you never know that an opportunity could come up. Uh, but I got it mostly for the isolating and the differential aspects and mainly for testing out power supplies and other things that might have common mode noise. And with an ordinary oscilloscope, probe being ground referenced, you get to see all that common mode noise and you're trying to look for things like ripple and noise generated across differentially across the thing, not the common mode noise, which generally would not upset device that's being powered by that power supply. 
it's handy to have these to be able to, to do those differential measurements and of course to be able to do isolated measurements. So here it is, it's, uh, here's the basic unit, it's got a PNC connector on one end and a couple of really short leads on the other end. I think they're about standard par for the course. It takes a 9 volt adapter here and I'll probably use something a little bit better than this when I use it. I have my wall wart eliminator which uses a very very high quality uh, switch mode power supplies in it, much higher quality than this. Let's plug this in and see if the right lights come on at the right time. Now it's uh, it's got two ranges here, 50 to 1 and 500 to 1. Uh, like I say, I won't be using it much in the very high voltage range, so I'll probably probably remain on 50 to 1 most of the time. And it comes with these nice long bendy clips. They're, they'd be nice for high voltage work. And it comes with these huge, big, sturdy, monstrous alligator clips, which are uh, uh, you know a nice addition to the lab anyway, because I don't have anything this big. But you can use much smaller clips too, and whatever kind of probe adapters you have, they'll go into a four millimeter banana plug like that. So this should be really good. And what I want to do first though is, is see if it'll fit into the case that I just got. And then uh, maybe we'll just hook it up to the scope and see what happens. Okay, here we got the case. So let's get everything out of the foam here. I'm hoping to be able to just transfer the foam over and that it'll be a fairly nice fit. Oh, it looks like it will be. Might just uh, require a little bit of trimming of the foam, but I don't think so. Maybe just the foam will compress down over a period of time. See, I made all these measurements of the foam. And that's why I bought this case exactly this size. So, uh, yeah, they'll go in here. Very nice. So yes, this will be better than keeping it in a cardboard box. Anyway, let me, let me hook this up to the scope here and we'll just, I'll, I'll just get the function generator up and we'll just look at a signal through it and just see how it looks. All right, so we've got a 10 megahertz signal going into it. Now, I've set this at 50 to one. I also put in a custom ratio on the channel for 50 to one as well. I do notice that the signal that's coming out of it is really nice and clean and that's that's good. Okay, so it does look like it's going to provide me with some uh, really good uh, ability to see noise and stuff like that. All right, folks, that's uh, that's this. Let me uh, get this out of the way and uh, we'll, we'll come right back with some other goodies to show you. Yeah, I did get one of these. This is a, a reference resistor. I got one of these a little while back, a 10K one, and it, it turned out really, really good. Uh, let me get a meter up there and we'll have a look. So if I plug this in here now it says uh, 10.006, so 10.0006 K ohms. Plug it into the meter and it comes up 10.0007. So yeah, these are, these are really accurate. So what I did, I went out and I bought uh, some more. So I got a, a, a 100 K ohm, a 1 K ohm and a 100 ohm going to give me a range here and let's check these ones out here too. So that's a 100.028. See what the meter makes of it. 100.030. So yeah, really good, really accurate. Um, this is 1K, 1.00011. 1 I don't know if the signal gets that kind of resolution or not. Let's have a look. Yes, it does. And yeah, look at that. And here we got a uh, 100.027K. That's the furthest off. It's off by 0 0.007K ohms, hugely within the precision and accuracy of the instruments. These are awfully good. Like if you wanted to get some precision resistors around, uh, for testing out meters or other equipment at all, uh, these these would make a good choice. They're, they're kind of inexpensive. So I leave a link to them down there, and you, you can have a look. But I think they're they're well worth the uh, money to get them. All right. There is a couple of items that did actually stay in their envelopes, and one other item here which you're probably not interested in. But uh, I mean, I got this off AliExpress too. You can get used things off there too. This is just a a keyboard for one of my um, really nice little classic Lenovo's. 
it's a little X201. And the, the five or six keys and the minus and equal keys stopped working on the old keyboard. So looking around, the best deal I could get on a, a keyboard for it, you can't, of course, you can't get them new anymore, but the best deal I got on a keyboard was from AliExpress. And this is supposed to be used in a good condition and it looks great. All right, so what this is, this is a four wire PT100 thermistor. I'm going to use this with my Siglent meter uh, because it's four wire measurement is incredibly accurate. I found with most bench meters I've, I've worked with, uh, when you use them with a thermocouple, because they, they warm up inside, they get the cold junction temperature wrong. This avoids that. This, this has got a four wire, it goes right down to the, the actual thermistor in this little bead down here. And it measures right across it, just like with a, a four wire resistance. And I can set up that signet to be able to do that. I've just got to put the, the right ends on the wire here. And uh, we'll, we'll see, you'll see that in the future. I may just do a, a follow-up to show you how well that works, but I do want it as a proper temperature reference. So that's why I'm going this route. And one other little package here, I think uh, by process of elimination, I know what's in this. Just some P-channel MOSFETs, some little ones. These are like complementary to the 2N7000. So I just wanted to try some, uh, some little experiments with, with small MOSFETs in a push-pull situation. So I picked up a small number of these. Like normally I don't use a lot of P-channel MOSFETs, but I just got a little, a little package of them to play around with. All right, folks, that's everything I have for you today. Uh, thanks a lot for coming out and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.